Hello guys, it's Megan Graham. How are you? Just wanted to come on to do a little live today and it looks like Alfie is ready to join me. So guys, today, sorry to adjust my screen and over adjust it a little bit too much. Nice to have you guys on today. Hello. So just wanted to pop on today and talk about 10 reasons to get a Yorkie. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I have three Yorkshire Terriers and one of them, Poppy, don't do anything naughty back there. Come on. One of them is back there. Um, so guys, today, all right, are you ready for this? Number one is that you want a small portable dog that you can travel with. Um, so one of the things that I love about having a Yorkie is that if I want to travel on a plane, I can actually, like Alfie is a great, great little traveler and I can bring him with me on the plane. He fits right under the seat. You do have to pay for uh, basically like a doggy plane ticket, um, but they're really easy to bring with you. Um, the only reason that I don't always travel with my Yorkies is that if I plan on being really busy on my trip, I feel like it's not always fair to my puppies. So I was actually in Colorado last week, which is why I look so tired because I'm so tired. Um, and no, I don't travel with all three of them. Um, so anyway, I didn't bring a dog to Colorado because I knew that I was going to be really busy and I didn't think it was actually fair to whichever dog I would bring. Um, so I knew that Jeff and I wanted to go snowmobiling and skiing and out to dinner and do all of these different things in Aspen. And I felt like if I brought a puppy with me, it was going to be by itself and it was going to be a little bit freaked out to be in a different environment without its siblings. So that was why I decided not to bring a Yorkie. So for me, it depends on the trip, whether I travel with a dog or not. Um, I always try to put myself into my dog's shoes, if you will, even though they don't really wear shoes. Um, and I didn't think that they would be happy if I was always leaving them alone. Um, Just kind of peeking through. And that's great that you want to get a Yorkie, Janet. Um, Isabella, I'm glad that you're catching me live. Thank you. And cute that you want a boy, Janet. Happy Sunday, Darlene. It's nice to see you. And Janine, how are you? I will tell them all hi. And I love them too. I was so happy to be back with them. Um, so no, Isabella, I don't travel with them. I think you're not even allowed to travel with three dogs. You would need maybe one, I'm trying to think, I think maybe one person could bring two dogs, but I'm not even sure about that. I believe it's just one dog per person. Um, but I don't think it would be fun or relaxing to travel with all three of my dogs. And most importantly, I don't think it would be fun for them. So most of the time I leave them at home. Um, but anyway, so, um, Mariana, I will answer your question and probably another time or perhaps at the end, but I'm just going to kind of go through these 10 things um, and try to stick to what I came on to talk about. If there's any quick questions, I can definitely answer them as they sort of like relate to the different things I'm talking about. Um, so number two is that you need a dog that doesn't shed and is hypoallergenic. So Yorkies don't shed like other dogs. They don't shed like labs. When when you have a lab, you're constantly lint rolling yourself. Um, it's sort of like my Siberian cat where you're always picking up hair. Um, I will say that they do lose a little bit of their hair just like people do, but very, very little. So you don't find a lot of Yorkie hair around the house. Although Yorkies are said to be hypoallergenic, I personally think that if someone has allergies, you should still go and visit a Yorkie breeder, be around the Yorkies and make sure that you don't have any allergies. Anyone can be allergic to anything. So there is no guarantee that you would not be allergic to a Yorkie. Um, I think it's very, very unlikely, but it's still a good idea to, if you have any allergy concerns, you know, really take the time to be around them, find a breeder that feels that it's important that you get to visit with a Yorkie um, and make sure that you're not allergic because the heartbreak of having to return an animal, come on up here, don't be naughty, come here, come on. The heartbreak of having to return an animal because you're allergic would be just so, so sad. Um, so although 
you know, everyone says that they're hypoallergenic, I would still check it out. Um, my Siberian cat is a breed that is known to be hypoallergenic, but I still had to test it out with my husband to make sure he wouldn't be allergic when we got our cat. Yes, cats shed so much. I've never picked up so much hair in my life. It is a wild amount of hair from my Siberian, but he is really beautiful and I love him. So number three, and I think that this is a really, really important one. If you're thinking about getting a Yorkie, uh, number three is that you have researched, you understand the breed, you know the ins and outs, you know their personality, and you feel confident that you can afford insurance, grooming, vet bills, and pet sitters or dog walkers if needed. Um, I know that when people are thinking about getting a dog, a lot of times they romanticize the fact that they're getting a dog and they just think about how cute they are. But I think really taking into account the entire picture and making sure that you have a budget and you're prepared to pay to have your dogs taken, oh, he's being such a baby, to pay to have your dogs taken care of if you're traveling um, or if they get sick and things like that. Those things are really, really important. Um, I know that when I was younger and I was getting my first dog, I actually considered getting a husky and I didn't really go too into all of the different um, all of the different aspects of what a husky would be like. And my godmother really spoke to me and just talked to me and said, I think this isn't the dog breed for you. Um, and I think at that time I was thinking more about what a husky looked like and that sort of like romantic, outdoorsy aspect. Um, I think a lot of people look at Yorkies and they almost feel like they're going to be toys and they forget that they really have a lot of personality. And I think they're very expensive too. I actually just heard someone say that Yorkies are bargain animals because they don't eat a lot of food. And I don't think that makes any sense at all. Just because they don't eat as much food as other dogs doesn't mean that they're any less expensive. Um, I personally think Yorkies are more fragile than other dogs. They require more grooming, more care. Um, I think they're more expensive dogs to keep personally. It's possible that you might not be paying more to keep a Yorkie, but I've found them to be pretty expensive and they have, they have a lot of needs, don't they? Just like they had somebody staying with them and taking care of them when I was traveling. And that's expensive. I don't necessarily just, um, I mean, you can't just drop three dogs off with someone. So when I take a trip, I also need to pay to have the dogs taken care of. And I personally don't like, or would never drop them off at a boarding facility. So it's expensive to have somebody stay at your house. So just things to think about, um, you know, it's a forever thing. That's so exciting that you're picking up your boy Yorkie on Friday and his name is Brody. That's a great name. I love that. I love Brody Jenner too. I don't know if that's where you got the name, but it is a great, great name. So number four, and this is the main reason why I have a Yorkie, you want a loyal and loving best friend. I have to say that in my experience, and I'm sure if you guys also have Yorkies, you probably agree, Yorkies make the most loyal and loving best friends in the entire world. So when I just got home um, from my trip, it was so amazing to come home and to see all of these babies. They were all so thrilled to see me. Um, I always try not to make it a super emotional greeting when I see them because I think that that can create separation anxiety. So I kind of, I come home and I don't make a really big deal of it, even though I'm so excited to see them. Um, but their little personalities when I come home, just, it feels so good, so welcoming. I mean, the, the way that this little guy is cuddling up against me, he's so happy that I'm holding him right now. Um, but they are just the best companions. They truly, truly love you. They curl right up next to you. Um, they are not, to me, they're not temperamental. Um, they're always just, they're wonderful friends with wonderful personalities. Um, it was interesting to see the difference. So I have not had a cat in a long time and I haven't been away from my cat. And um, when I got home, the cat was actually angry at me and you could tell he looked a little bit wild eyed, his feelings were hurt. And you know, the dogs were just so happy to see me. They definitely were not mad. They didn't hold a grudge that I was traveling. And the cat took like a good 24 hours to warm back up to me. And, and he did, but his feelings were clearly hurt. So 
definitely a little bit of a difference um, between cats and dogs. I mean, I think we all knew there was a difference. He's a very dog-like cat, but he's still very different. So I think all of these are important, honestly. Number five for reasons to get a Yorkie is that you don't mind barking. Now, I know that not every single person on here has a Yorkie that barks a lot, um, but my dogs do bark a lot. Um, there's Once they start barking, there's honestly nothing that I can do to stop them from barking. Sometimes if I shoot them with a water gun, they might stop, but then they'll start a minute later. Um, I think a lot of people ask how to stop the barking. Maybe it's possible. I definitely think once you get three, it's extremely, extremely hard to do. So if, are you making a funny sound? Are you making a funny sound? You don't like that I picked you up. Um, but if you don't like barking, I would not get a Yorkie because there is a very good chance that your dog is going to bark and it's going to be annoying sometimes. So if you want a really quiet dog, I probably wouldn't recommend a Yorkie, even though you might have a really quiet Yorkie. It's possible. It's just not always the case. I mean, I've had five Yorkies and most of them have loved to bark. Um, Teddy did not bark a lot all the time, but when I got the three of them, like this guy barks so much and there's no stopping him. So just food for thought, if you need a really quiet dog, may not be the one for you. Um, <laughs> Yes, it's definitely important to socialize them. Hi, Cindy, how are you? It says, now have my two puppies picked up two weeks ago. They're doing great. Names are Alfie and Charlie. I love that you have an Alfie that's so cute. Um, what is a clock in your country? Uh, mine is just so full of love. I know they are. They're so, so loving. They're the best little dogs. Darlene says, let's see, or Isabella says, my cat pukes on my pillow when I leave her. Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> um, Christian says, you are trained to do things outside or do things at home. You are with them to the fullest. Um, do you mean, are they trained to do things outside? Um, Christian, they go outside and inside. Um, Mariana, what age did my Yorkie start to bark? Um, Lola started to bark when she was really young. So she was about, I mean, she, I think she barked as soon as, I mean, probably within a week of when I got her, I didn't get Poppy until she was a year and a half. Poppy rarely barks. She only barks if the other dogs bark or if somebody rings the bell to deliver a package, Poppy goes crazy and she is all business. Um, they're really funny. Um, and Alfie, when I got Alfie, when I brought him home, he was two and a half. And at first he didn't bark at all. We were so excited. We were like, wow, we got a really quiet Yorkie, but he learned to bark from Lola. So I don't think he really started barking a lot until he was two and a half. And now you love to bark, don't you? You bark all the time and you won't stop. He is a real barker. He loves it. Hello, Brie. How are you? It's nice to see you. And Donald says, I have a Yorkie and my little Lucy doesn't bark all the time. That's great, Donald. Um, I think it really depends on how many you have. Um, some people have one and they can be very barky, but oftentimes if you don't have more than one, you might be able to get away without having a super um, yappy Yorkie. But it seems like when you get more and they form a little Yorkie gang, there's always something for them to bark about. So mine don't bark all the time at my home. Although if they hear me walk into the building, they can hear my voice so well, they will start barking as soon as they hear me. Um, you says, honestly, I've been around Labrador and Border Collies barking. So my Yorkie is pretty quiet. Mariana says, my Yorkie is very silent. She's like a ghost. I have never heard her bark. And the breeder told me that she also has never heard her bark. And she may not. I mean, Yorkies are just like people in that they have personalities and each one is an individual. So just because mine bark a lot doesn't mean that yours will, but more often than not, Yorkies bark a lot. I see a lot of Yorkies when I walk mine in the park and most of them out there bark quite a bit. I would say 70% of Yorkies bark quite a lot. Um, 
but you're very lucky, Janine. It says my Yorkie Isabella does not bark at all. She is very quiet. And Mariana says she is still a puppy. So, you know, everyone is different. Just because I say that Yorkies bark a lot doesn't mean that you don't have one that's quiet. And if you do, I think you're very lucky. Um, <laughs> number six is you want a very smart dog. So Yorkies are extremely smart. I mean, if anything, they are definitely dogs that are very capable of being trained, although they are so smart that they may not want to be trained. Um, and they are extremely smart in that they can figure out how to get exactly what they want from you. So I would say out of all of my Yorkies, Lola is probably the smartest Yorkie that I have. And she's very demanding because she's so smart. So she definitely knows exactly what she wants and she will sit around until she gets what she wants. So when we go to sleep at night, Lola loves to sleep right near me, but she has to have the perfect sleeping position. And if she feels that I am out of place in any way, she'll stand over me making a really quiet whining noise until I give her what she wants. So she's very, very smart. They're very smart in that they also know the schedule of the young ladies that work for me. So they wait for them on their first day of the week. They lay by the door waiting for the girls to get here. Um, so super, super smart. They seem to know their schedule. They know when it's feeding time. Um, they are able to pick up on things like how I answer phone calls. So if I answer something and I even vaguely mention that somebody might be coming up, they know it and they get so excited and they start to bark. So extremely, extremely smart dogs. I like how smart they are. I think it's very funny. Um, and I think it's amazing how smart they are. So they're, they're, they probably are the equivalent of, I think, like four-year-old children. But they definitely understand what I'm saying and um, very intelligent dogs for sure. Janet says, this lady said her Yorkie was her service dog. Um, what lady is that, Janet? Sorry if I missed something else. It just says this lady. Um, Mariana says, our Yorkie already knows shake and sit. That's so great. It sounds like you're spending a lot of time training your dog and she's really, really smart. So she's going to learn lots and lots of tricks, which is amazing. And Flaminka says, hi, my Yorkie is four months and weighs seven pounds. When will he stop growing? Um, I'm not really sure, Flaminka. I haven't had a baby in so long, but that would be a question for either your vet or your breeder. It's been years since I have had a growing Yorkie, so I couldn't really tell you off of the top of my head. But seven pounds is a great weight, and even if your Yorkie is... Um, nine or 10 pounds, I'm sure your Yorkie will be great. So Christian, it's not really a video about that, but thanks for asking. Um, so, all right, guys, my next one is, and this is, I know I keep saying how important these things are, but I do think this one is really, really important. So number seven for reasons to get a Yorkie is you are prepared to love a Yorkie forever for better or for worse. And it kind of goes back to the romanticizing getting a Yorkie or getting a puppy. A lot of times people are thinking about those good times. They're thinking about, you know, taking their dog for a walk on a beautiful day or picking up a puppy. Um, but I really like to think of it that when you get a dog, you are getting a friend for life. And um, with Teddy, he wound up getting a pretty... Um, pretty extreme autoimmune disease. And at times I was at the animal hospital with him, I would say about four times a week, um, getting different um, under the skin fluids to keep him healthy, um, you know, different emergency appointments. It was really expensive. It was really time consuming. Um, I was awake, you know, he was really sick at night. So I was usually awake with him throughout the night. And um, the way that I looked at it, I sort of, I brought him into the world being his owner. And I was also going to escort him out of the world and, you know, be his best friend, cancel trips where I needed to, which was basically all the time because I didn't want to leave him and even have somebody with him all the time so that he wasn't by himself because he was really sick. Um, and I think for some people, you know, this would be too big of a commitment. And so it's important to think about these things before you get a Yorkie because, you know, they are much like people in that as they age, they need a lot of care. Um, 
And so when you get a Yorkie, you just have to know that regardless of what kind of apartment you get um, or whether you have children or you know whether you get married, that your dog needs to go with you from the time that you get it to the time that it passes. And so really just knowing that if you get, um, if you get a Yorkie, you're going to make a commitment for life. So I think really knowing that if you want to get a Yorkie, you're prepared to take care of an animal um, selflessly, you know, and spend money and, you know, do all the things and be inconvenient sometimes um, because you love it and you're making a commitment. So I think that's a really important part of getting a Yorkie too. Um, yes, Yorkies can definitely be service dogs as well. And it says, Mariana says, my Yorkie is 11 weeks and she weighs four pounds. Sounds like a very healthy weight. Um, you asked any tips for growing hair on Yorkies. Um, so I think daily gentle grooming is really important. Um, not waiting for the hair to get matted as well and always taking care of it every single day. Um, using high quality shampoo and conditioner makes a big difference. So I've got some links below in this video. I like Aspana Silk. I also like Isle of Dogs. Um, also giving them vitamins and minerals. So I've got a link as well to Dr. Dobius's vitamins and minerals. And um, I would go so far as every couple of years doing a gentle detox on your dog, just to make sure that all of your dog's systems are working really well so that their hair is growing and their body is functioning well. Um, that is under poly pet products. Um, and then feeding them a great a great, you know, food as well. So it's not just, you know, the outside that you're taking care of. It's the things that you do on the inside that make a big difference for your dog's hair to grow long and be, you know, really healthy and strong. Um, Janet, it is hard to keep their teeth clean. They don't really love to have their teeth brushed and they have very crowded little mouths. So it is hard. Um, Marcy says they have two Yorkies and it is definitely a commitment and very costly. I agree, Marcy. I think that they're more expensive than a lot of other dogs are. Um, they just take a lot of money to groom and, uh, time each day. They tend to have such little delicate bodies that they can have health problems. So it is a big, um, money commitment. Um, Mariana, I'm not really sure. I don't really name their coats. He has very, very thick hair and tons and tons of hair. Um, I would say start brushing your Yorkie's teeth right, pretty much right away when you get it, when it's a baby. Um, anything that you want your dog to get used to, you want to start doing as soon as possible so that they don't get used to, um, you know, not having their teeth brushed and then all of a sudden you start one day. Um, Bill's asking what type of toothbrush do you recommend? So Bill, I actually, if you guys look below, um, below the video in the description, I've put like a huge master list of my favorite Yorkie things and I've got my favorite Yorkie toothbrushes right in there. I try to make it easy for you guys so you can just find those links of the things that I use and I love. Um, so yeah, it's just like a list of my favorite things. So it's right in there um, and you can get it off of Amazon if you like it. Don't fall off here. Don't fall off here. So number eight for reasons to get a Yorkie is that you want a little dog with a big personality. Now, I know that some of you guys already have Yorkies, so you definitely know this. Where are you going, buddy? You don't want to sit with me? Oh, come on. Come on. They have extremely big personalities. They think that they're big dogs. Um, they love to bark. They love to play. Um, a lot of people think that little dogs are going to be so different than big dogs. And, you know, they don't know that they're any different. They just think they're super tough and they love to play and have fun. So I think that they have a huge personality and they just love their owners so, so much. And they love to be, I mean, I don't want to say spoiled, but they love to be cared for. They love to go places. Um, they're just, to me, they're just like big dogs, but in this little tiny compact body, they're so easy to cuddle and they're so easy to love. Um, you're welcome, Bill. It's my pleasure. I hope it's helpful that I have all that stuff in the links for you. Um, the toothbrush that I have in the links is so great. It's the tiniest toothbrush I could ever find. And it works very, very well. I love that toothbrush. Hello, Jazz. Hello, Jasmine. How are you? 
So number nine is that you love sporty and active dogs. Um, a lot of people see Yorkies and they think that they are going to be, you know, this little, almost like a dog that wants to be carried around. So I know some people just think they're going to be like little toy dogs that they dress up and they don't really, um, you know, think they're going to be like exercising them. My Yorkies want a lot of exercise. They like long walks. They like playing. And if they don't get their exercise, I think they can be a little bit crazy. So it's important to know that you're probably going to need to be pretty active when you get a Yorkie because they have high activity levels, don't they? Um, we are going to go on a walk a little bit later. I'm just waiting until it's a beautiful day in Boston. So there's a ton of people in the park. So I'm going to go a little bit later when it calms down and there's not as many people. So I can have a little bit of privacy when I'm walking, but it is um, definitely, they love to go on like a 45 minute walk. It makes them so happy. Um, how many times do I have to get them groomed? So you need to groom them every single day. It takes me about 15 to 20 minutes per dog. And um, I also get them groomed every eight weeks, although I've been learning how to groom them myself. It's not perfect. They don't look perfect when I do it, but I know that eventually I'm going to get really good at it. So I did it I did all three of them. I cut their hair the week before I went to Aspen and then the dog groomer came and actually cut their hair after. She does a better job than I do, but I still was happy to get the practice and it was better than the the first two times I did it. So every single time it's getting a little bit better, but then I get home and she has groomed them and they look way better. So someday it will be good. Um, Janine says, Megan, my poly pet is being shipped. Can you tell us how to start the detox? Um, so the way that I start the detox is very, very slowly, Janine. Um, so I detox myself as well because I just had so many different issues from uh, my job working with chemicals and also really nasty mold exposure. And my best way that I can say it is that usually slow and steady is the best way to go with detoxing um, because you're actually pulling things out of your dog, of yourself and things like that. So I do much smaller amounts than the detox actually says to do because even if you're doing a small amount, it is still helping your dog. Um, and just good to know, but uh, dogs have a lot of chemical exposure because they walk on the ground. So they have about 50 times the chemical exposure that we do as humans. So I think it's an amazing thing to be detoxing your dog. I'm so happy, first of all, that you, you got the dog detox. Um, I believe that it says like there's little drops to help to feed your dog's mitochondria. And it says to give one pound uh, or one drop per pound of body weight. So that would be five for mine. I only give them two drops and I've been doing the detox for about four months. Um, I'll probably get them up to three drops soon, but I just think slower is better. Um, with detoxing, if you go too quickly, you could make your dog sick basically. So um, not trying to scare you and you probably wouldn't, but if you ever feel like your dog has any, um, if your dog's symptoms are any worse, it actually just means you should give them a little break, like say, seven days, five days off from the detox until they seem totally normal and then give them less. Um, my dogs have no symptoms from it. I just give them a very, very small amount of each one. I can't even really give you a measurement, um, but I would say I give them, I don't even have a measurement this small, but I probably give them like a 16th of a teaspoon of the black powder that detoxes them. I put it on their food and then two drops of the liquid. Um, when I started it, I gave them one drop of the liquid for a month. So just very, very slowly, it's still going to work if you do it really slowly. Um, and I think you'll really notice a lot of great things. My dogs have been so much better neurologically since I did it. Um, and it's made a huge difference. They haven't had any kind of fungal skin infections. Their eyes have been so much brighter and clearer. And, um, one of my friends actually did it with, she has a nine-year-old Doberman and she was having a ton of skin condition issues with him, a lot of like discharge in his eyes and he was really tired and she did it and she said at first he seemed a little bit worse. So I had her take a week off with, off with him and then give him less. Then she started again and within six weeks, he's had so much more energy. His eyes are clear and bright and his skin problems have gone away. So 
it can do some really great things for your dog and it makes a big difference to get those chemicals out of your dog's body. Um, we're exposed to so many different things these days that it's difficult as humans and as dogs to get the chemicals and to get the pollution out of our bodies. So super, super excited that you got that and you're going to start. Um, Mariana, I don't even really know, just being really, really gentle and doing it over time. I don't think a puppy would ever let you do it. So I think part of it is just having your puppy get a little bit older, um, getting a little bit more mature. But the more comfortable that you can get with your dog and doing little like tiny massages and things like that will make such a big, um, a huge difference. Um, Janet, it's my pleasure. You're welcome. Um, Flamika says, thank you for the live. I know we're getting you off track with the questions. I really do appreciate it. No, it's totally fine. Don't even worry, Flamika. I'm just going to do a pretty brief live today just because I've had so much stuff going on lately. So, um, but I, I love to get on live with you. I've had, my health has been kind of spotty lately, so I haven't really been able to commit to being on, um, being on a live because I've been a little bit low energy again. It, it's sort of like ebbs and flows with how much energy I have, but um, no, I appreciate your questions and always happy to help out wherever I can. Um, Jasmine says, can they live around five more dogs? I mean, can they maybe, but that seems like a lot of dogs. I feel like I wouldn't really get a I wouldn't get a Yorkie if I already had five more, five dogs, but that's just me. I also think it's like, you have to really think about what are the other dogs like. They don't always do really well with big dogs and big dogs don't always recognize that Yorkies are dogs. So it's possible that a larger dog could hurt a Yorkie. It's also possible that it couldn't, but it's very possible that it could. So I don't think I would get a Yorkie if I had five more dogs. It would be, it would be a lot, definitely. Um, Marcy is asking, have I heard of Wonderside flea and tick spray? If not, what flea uh, and tick do you use? Um, honestly, just the name, I would say, like just a gut reaction, Wonderside sounds really bad, I'll be honest. Um, so if you guys don't know, I'm very into natural products. And if you don't know why, um, I got extremely, extremely sick it was about, it was almost five years ago. So it's been a long time. I'm still not all the way better. I'm a lot better. Um, I had a terrible mold exposure combined with, um, the fact that I was a hair colorist and I'm a hair colorist. So I'm exposed to a lot of chemicals and, um, heavy metals as well. And, um, when I was exposed to the mold, I got super, super sick. I've had just multi-organ issues. It was really, really bad. And I've, so I've had to learn a lot about what I put into my body to um, do my best at getting better. Um, it's not really a straightforward thing. Like people are always like, why aren't you better now? And I'm like, well, cause my entire body was assaulted by toxins. Um, and so it moved through all my organs and created various issues. So um, I've learned a lot about it. And I think that you know, to each their own. But for me, I would never put any of the traditional uh, flea and tick things onto my dogs. Um, if you really read about them and to read about them, you have to go to certain search browsers. I don't search on Google. I know Google is part of YouTube, um, but there's other search browsers that will give you more honest answers. Um, and if you really look a lot of flea and tick medicine, it's actually a neurotoxin. So I didn't really realize this when I had my first dog. And I think it was one of the things that it really added to why he got so sick. And I believe why so many small dogs get autoimmune issues. Um, the neurotoxin that kills ticks also, I think, killed my dog as well. So it's, if you think about it, you know, for a lot of those things, and I never thought about this once because it was just given to me by my vet, but you put it directly on your dog's back and it, it absorbs directly into your dog's skin. And I don't think we would put that on ourselves. Um, so for me, I actually, um, I go, if I, if I don't have a link, you guys tell me if I don't have a link, but that same exact brand, Dr. Dobius, um, you can find it on Amazon as well. It's Dr. Dobius flea and tick spray. And I use that. It is natural. Um, he is, excuse me, I turn it up. 
he is a really amazing functional vet that uses a lot of natural things for dogs. And he really knows what a lot of chemicals can do to dogs and that they can really overwhelm our dog's liver and kidneys and also cause a lot of autoimmune problems. So I use the flea and tick spray. It's worked super, super well for me um, and to each their own. So I can't tell anybody what to use. I just wish that I had known about um, the effects that were going to happen when I was using that on my teddy. Um, towards the end, before he got sick, I remember him hiding when I would go to put his um, flea and tick medicine on his back. And at the time I was like, Teddy, it's no big deal. It's just wet. It's going to be fine. And within a couple of days of the application, he stopped being able to walk on his own. Um, and so it definitely added to it. I mean, I think that when something happens to your dog within a couple of days of applying something to your dog, you can definitely draw a conclusion that that had something to do with it. And of course, with what I know now, I, I know it did too. So I'm really careful about what I put on my dogs um, just because I can't, you know, you can do, one of the great things is like the detox is going to help to pull some of those extra things out that shouldn't be there from those medicines. Um, but I try not to just put them in in the first place whenever possible because they really didn't do very well with my teddy. Um, Flamika, I'm not sure. That's a really good question about eating the grass. I would definitely ask your vet for something like that. My thing is always this. If you're saying, should I worry, then maybe yes. And I think that's always a reason to call and ask your vet. I know one of my good clients is a vet and she would always rather somebody ask her a question um, than to feel like they're not wanting to bother her. So if you have a good vet, and I hope you do, I would definitely call your vet and see um, what they use. And Bill says, my wife uses a lot of doTERRA oils. What would you recommend for freeze, uh, fleas? That's great, Bill. Those are really nice essential oils. I use Young Living, but I think um, doTERRA, I believe, is like a spinoff of Young Living. I feel like something happened with the companies, blah, 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 but it's a really good company. Um, and so the Dr. Dobius would be what I personally would use. Um, Marcy says, it's a lemongrass essential oil. Um, I still don't really know, Marcy. A lot of essential oils are not good for pets, so I can't really say if I can't really say if it's good. It's it's not what I use, um, so I don't know. Um, Mariana says the flea and tick medicine I use is Bravecto. Yeah, I personally wouldn't give that one to my dogs. Um, I know vets give it, but I wouldn't give it to my dogs personally. Um, but that's just me. It's okay if you use it, but my dogs never are getting it. <laughs> um, so my last thing, number 10, why you should get a Yorkie is that you have 15 to 20 minutes a day to groom your Yorkie. So I will say, and this is a mistake that I made when I was younger, I did not know how much work Yorkies are to groom. And it's not that it's a bad thing, um, you know, to, to not know things, right? but they do take a lot of work. It's consistent work. And if you groom them every day, it's going to be so much more gentle for them. And they're not going to have to get shaved when they go to the groomer. So when I had Teddy, I let him get very, very tangled. And then I brought him to the groomer and they actually shaved all of his hair off. And he was so sad and so embarrassed. And hi, buddy, come here. Come on. He was really unhappy and it took months and months for his hair to grow out. So now I am really on top of the grooming. And even though my dogs have very short hair, just really grooming their little heads and freeing up the goop from their eyes and, you know, making sure that they're nice and healthy takes a few minutes every day. So even if you think you can do it in less time, I would still plan on that amount of time because sometimes they just need little things, whether it's just making sure to really clear all the goop that tends to form right around their little, um, you know, the corners, like the sleep in their eyes. Um, you just want to really make sure that you have that time. I feel like I hear it time and time again that people get their dogs shaved because their dogs are matted. And it's really, it's okay, buddy, don't fall. It's really not healthy for your dog to get matted. So really just planning on that and knowing that it is something that you're going to need to do every single day. Um, so those are my 10 reasons to get a Yorkie. I will just say that my Yorkies are the most wonderful thing that I have in my entire life. And um, 
I, I wouldn't trade them for the world. I, every single time I travel, I can't wait to get home. Um, they just are my best friends, my best companions. They make me smile every day. They give, you know, they might be a certain amount of work or money to keep. Um, but the joy that I get from the relationship that I have with them is so incredible. And to me, they definitely give more than they take. Um, they're just, I don't know, it sounds, it sounds so funny, but my godmother always said that animals are closer to God than humans. Um, I think they're very innocent. They're very wonderful. They're very loving. They see joy in every single morning and every single day in the smallest things. And um, they are just so happy. So those are my reasons for getting a Yorkie. I um, hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> enjoying this. Um, I will, so I will add that later, Mariana, if I'm missing that one. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, how did I get my Yorkie's ears croaked up? Um, what, I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure. Um, Flamika says your Yorkies are precious and I'm sure you get stopped every time you take them out. Um, Jasmine says, can you bring them with you? Can, can I bring them with me where? Um, Anyway, so that is my reasons for getting a Yorkie. It's always so nice to chat with you guys. Thank you so much for joining today. And um, Janine says, I'm hoping the detox will help with skin, eye allergy problems. Isabella is on daily eye meds, three times a day, monthly allergy injections. And now they started her on pain meds to tolerate meds. Um, quick question, Janine. So, and I know this is never something that anybody wants to think about. Is there any way that your home has water damage that you don't know about? Um, um, I know that a lot of those things can happen if you have mold in your home and 50% of homes have mold. So um, could be other stuff as well. But when your dog is having a lot of those things, I would consider doing mold testing. Um, the thing that is really hard is just being able to find someone that can test well because you don't want to do air testing. But if your dog has all of those things, it really makes me wonder about the air quality in your home. Um, I know that a lot of those things were happening with my, my dogs when we had a mold problem. Um, so it could be good to get it checked out just in case. I do hope that it helps you. Janet, thank you so much. Love you guys too. And really appreciate you guys coming on today. Um, yes, I will link to that, Mariana. Thank you so much for letting me know. I really appreciate it. Um, and Mariana, um, I'm going to hop off in just a minute, but would you tell me again what you were asking about at the beginning? Um, it was something to do with food, but I just wanted to kind of get on. So I didn't get too off track with all the things because I knew a lot of people were hopping on for this part. Um, trim Yorkie ears to get them to stand up. So the groomer trimmed um, the ears for me to get them to stand up. Um, I did trim them a little bit as well. I just took off any excess hair because if they get too heavy, they don't um, they don't stand up. Absolutely, Mariana, I will link to that and I appreciate you letting me know. I love the, I really love the flea and tick spray. It's about the bowls. As you probably know, I got my Yorkie last month. I already knew that Yorkies are picky eaters, but with the food, it's not the problem, it's the bowl. I have tried glass, plastic, and metal, but she refuses to eat from her bowl. She only eats if the food is on the training pad. Um, so you know what, Mariana, this is really funny. I might know the answer to this. Poppy does the same thing, and I feed her on a placemat. So she doesn't like bowls. She's super afraid of them. She won't eat on plates. Um, and so what I do is I just take a nice little, um, plastic placemat. You can also use, they have like really thin plastic cutting boards and I feed her, um, like, you know, they almost roll up and they're thin plastic. So I just feed her on a placemat and she has no problem eating on it. See if that works. Poppy's afraid of bowls. I don't know why, but I have a feeling, you know, definitely comment back later and let me know if it worked for her, but that's what works for Poppy. I don't know why. The other dogs are fine to eat off of dishes and plates and things like that, but that is how she she does it. 
Um, so guys, it was so fun to chat with you today. Thank you so much for showing up to my live stream. I hope this was fun for you. And if you don't have a Yorkie, I hope you're considering all these different things. You're thinking about it really carefully. You're budgeting to make sure that it's a good idea for you. And if it does, if everything aligns and everything sounds like the right thing to do, um, and you're doing it for all the right reasons and, and things like that, then I hope that it you're, you fall as in love with your keys as, as I have. So, um, definitely do try it, Mariana. I think it works. It, I don't know why, but it works so well. I discovered it because Poppy would only eat off the floor. Um, and so I thought, well, if she eats off the floor, maybe I could put a placemat down. So it would be, you know, a little bit cleaner and things like that. And then it worked really well. Mariana, thank you so much. Bye. It was great to see you. And, um, it says you could also use a Kong toy. Uh, I'm, I don't think a Kong toy for feeding, but um, not if they're afraid. Like I know Poppy wouldn't eat from that, but it's a good suggestion. Um, you are so welcome, Mariana. It was great to see you. Flamika, thank you for coming. Everybody, thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. Alfie says goodbye. He wants me to brush him. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you again, guys. Stay healthy and stay beautiful. And um, if you need any advice for products, feel free to look at the links below. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful week. Bye, Janine. And Janine, feel free to check in with me if you want to um, you know, if you need any help along the way, just comment on one of my videos. I think I have a poly pet video even about detoxing your dog. So feel free to comment during the week and let me know how it's going when you're detoxing your dog. I'm so happy that you're doing that. I wish everybody would do that for their dog. It makes a huge difference. So bye guys. I will see you soon. Thanks again for coming.